Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here, got another Master Duel video for you. So today we're going to go back to Pure Sprite, although there's a lot of things in this list that probably look quite familiar from our Melfi Sprite build. Uh, particularly, we do actually have a couple of Melfi cards. We have Caddy and Penny, uh, and then we also have the End of Anubis uh, to grab off the Mannequin Cat, as well as the Herald of Arclight in here. So, yeah, I decided to borrow a couple of the ideas from the Melfi Sprite deck and see if I could apply those to the Pure Sprite deck. Uh, the idea, because I was really thinking about it, and like, if you really deconstruct the Melfi engine, uh, or rather the Melfi side of the Melfi sprite deck, uh, to make the Herald of Arclight on your opponent's turn, you really just need the one caddy and the one penny here. So, uh, I was like, yeah, why not? We'll just try them out. It's just a couple of slots in the pure sprite deck. I think we can make room for it. Uh, we've also made room for quite a bit of anti-tier limit tech here. Uh, we're rocking a playset of DD Crow. Uh, as I mentioned, we are playing the End of Anubis, Summon Off of the Mannequin Cat. And we also have a couple of Dimension Shifters here as well. Uh, it's funny how many decks that really wouldn't consider uh, touching Dimension Shifter before now are like, okay, can I feasibly get away with making some amount of plays without my graveyard? If yes, all right, let's jam two Dimension Shifter. Um, yeah, it's definitely a consequence of the Tier 0 meta. Uh, normally, you know, you know me, I, I don't like to include so much tech to hate on one deck, but uh, that deck is definitely enough of your matchups that I think it is absolutely worth playing stuff like this. And there's also a lot of other graveyard-based decks that end up getting uh, incidentally hit by it as well. So, as far as our level 2 engines, we still, of course, have the frogs, the swap frogs, and the Ronin Toten. Uh, I decided to sub out the Dark Beckoning Beast for Nimble Beavers here. Uh, for two reasons. Honestly, the main reason was just that uh, the Dark Beckoning Beast engine takes up more room in the main deck. Uh, it's five cards, the three Beckoning Beast and two Opening the Spirit Gates. You could really only need one, but I really like having two if you're playing that package. But uh, in any case, it's four to five cards versus three. Uh, the other very minor reason, although this does come up, you know, I think often enough that it's worth considering is that Nimble Beavers, being beasts, have the ability to be searched by Melfi Caddy. Now, of course, again, with Melfi Caddy, you're 99% of the time just going to get Penny, so that way you can immediately sink into Herald of the Arclight. But uh, there are definitely instances where uh, it's good to grab the Nimble Beaver as well. Um, we're still playing all the same numbers of Sprite cards. We still have three blue, three jet. Actually, in most pure builds, I do play two red, but just one of each red and carrot here. Um, the two gigantic and the two elf. Oh, you know what? We did take out the pixies. We're not playing pixies anymore. Um, because I hadn't, didn't have room, not only for it in the main deck, but also the, uh, Dagusto Phoenix in the extra deck here. Although I will say, I do kind of miss having a way to OTK, even if it's not Dagusto Phoenix, just having a cat shark in the extra deck might not be bad, but, um, yeah, if I were going to do that, Honestly, if I were going to do that, I'd probably just drop Mannequin Cat and End of Anubis anyway, and since I have the main deck slot, I might as well just, you know, put in uh, Degusto Phoenix and Sprite Pixies. But, uh, again, I thought it wouldn't be bad to have yet another tech that you could bring out against the tier limit matchup. So, yeah, like I said, we're just taking this in more of a pure direction than the Melfi Sprite build was, because, again, the stuff like the Wallies, like... Melfi Wally is a pretty good card, but uh, wasn't really fully needed. And even the extra deck, uh, all you need is Melfi of the Forest, which we do have a copy of it here in order to, uh, of course, search the caddy here. But yeah, beyond that, um, we're just going for a more minimalistic uh, Melfi approach here. The DD Crows this is actually my first time playing DD Crow in this tier 1 meta, the first deck I'm playing a playset of them in. And I think they're all right. Um, in tier limits themselves, I probably wouldn't play them, uh, just because I don't think I'd have the room, but uh, in other decks that do have the room, um, it's like, you know, it's kind of 50-50, it's kind of right? Uh, it kind of feels the same as playing Ash Blossom uh, against tier limits. Sometimes you Ash Blossom the Rhino Heart, and that's enough to stop them, and that feels pretty good, but there are uh, often more times than that uh, where you do get to Ash an important effect when they just go into another play. The same kind of tends to happen with DD Crow, right? Sometimes you pitch DD Crow uh, and you stop them from summoning their Kikolos and then they don't really have any more plays beyond that. But uh, there's a lot of times where you'll DD Crow a Fuser and then they just like, you know, Shiren pitch a different Fuser or like, um, they just, they just end up sending another Fuser from the deck to the graveyard by one of the many, many different ways they're able to do that. So, um, yeah, DD Crow, it's like, uh, 
I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it yet, but I mean, again, I think if a deck has the slots for it like this one does, might as well try it out. It seems like there's not really any reason not to. Again, not definitely not in this metagame. So, yeah, I think that's about pretty much everything I wanted to say about the build here itself. Now, as always, as ever, let's go ahead and break it down card by card and then take a look at some gameplay. So we're playing three DD Crow, three Swap Frog, one Ronin Totem, three Max C, three Nimble Beaver, one Melfi Caddy, three Sprite Blue, three Sprite Jet, one Sprite Red, one Sprite Carrot, one Melfi Penny, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, one The End of Anubis, two Dimension Shifter, three Triple Tactic Talent, two Called by the Grave, uh, two Sprite Starter, one Sprite Smashers, and then three Infinite Permanents. There's our main deck. For the extract, we're on one Herald of the Arclight, one Sky Cavalry Centuria, one number 29 Mannequin Cat, one Melfi of the Forest, one Onibiwara Soul Sweeper, two Gigantic Sprite, one Downward Magician, one Divine Arsenal Ah Zeus Sky Thunder, one IP Mascarena, two Sprite Elf, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax, and then one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. All right, there is our list. Let's go ahead and move on to some games. Okay, so this first opponent was actually on an anti-meta deck, but I'm really just using this game as more of an example of what to show, um, to show what like a good turn one play with this deck looks like. A little bit of a, a little bit of a combo guide, so to speak, here with this first game. So uh, we're gonna start off with Swap Frog Jet, uh, just overall fantastic hand with the starter, the Ash, and the Call by as well. I'm gonna start by normaling the Swap Frog, sending Rona Toad, and then I get to special the Jet. I'm gonna use that to add the Smashers from my deck to my hand because, of course, I already have the starter here. Then I'm gonna overlay the Swap Frog and the Jet into the Gigantic Sprite. I'm gonna activate Gigantic Sprite's effect, detaching your order to special summon Max C. Uh, I'm actually not summoning Sprite Blue here because I get to just do that off the starter anyway. So. Uh, Sprite Blue is going to go ahead and add the Sprite Red, special summon the Sprite Red, uh, and then I get to link the Blue and the Gigantic off into the Sprite Elf. Note that summoning Max C like this is actually not necessarily a standard part of this combo, but because I happen to open my Swap Frog, uh, I can use the opportunity to get Max C into my hand here. Uh, had I not opened a Swap Frog, I would have summoned that off the Gigantic Sprite. Now I'm going to use the Elf effect to bring back my Swap Frog, and I get to use Swap Frog's bouncing effect to return the max C to my hand uh, just after I send another Swap Frog from deck to grave. So, using this Swap Frog to bring back the Ronin, uh, then I'm going to link those two off in order to summon my IP Mascarena. Again, this is all looking pretty standard so far. If you've played Pure Sprite, you've probably seen lines like this a lot. Uh, going to bring back the Ronin, uh, except ending, instead of rather, I'm just ending on this board, I'm going to overlay my red and my Ronin Toten into Melfi of the Forest. Now here comes our little Melfi line. Uh, I'm going to use the effect detaching a sprite red in order to add the Melfi Caddy from deck to hand. Set a couple of cards, special summon this Melfi Caddy. I'll put it in the zone that Sprite Elf points to. And boom, there is a very, very good uh, turn one board there. Um, we even again got to add the Max C from deck to hand, although. Uh, if we had not done that, this board, or if we had not opened Swap Frog, rather, this board would probably still look exactly the same, it just wouldn't have the Max C in the hand. Um, but because we opened Swap Frog, we got to summon this off the Gigantic, and end on this board state. So what this allows you to do, uh, is you have a number of disruption options here. You can use Elf to bring back the Sprite Red during your opponent's turn for more Monster Negate. Uh, if you already had Red on the board, uh, you can just grab Jet to add a starter for plays for your next turn. We have IP Mascarena, which of course allows us to go into uh, this nice little suite of Link Monsters between Nightmare Unicorn, Mech Knight Crusader Avermax, and Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Melfi Caddy, what that's going to do is, when our opponent summons a monster, we return it from the field to our hand to add a beast monster. That's going to be our other Melfi monster, Melfi Penny. Melfi Penny can special summon itself as a quick effect during the opponent's main phase at, at pretty much any given time we have priority. And then once you do that, you can sync it with the caddy that's in your hand in order to make the Herald of the Arclight. So, uh, we have the ability to do that. And also on top of that, Melfi of the Forest, when you bounce that Melfi caddy, can negate a, an opponent's face-up monster's card effects and also keep it from attacking. Uh, this doesn't tend to come up super duper often, but it can be relevant sometimes. And then if you wanted to protect your Herald of the Arclight, if, for example, you were playing against Tier Limit, uh, you could potentially use your IP uh, with Sprite Elf to go into the Avermax that'll stop your opponent from attacking your Herald of Arclight. And then, yeah, we even have the Call By and the Sprite Smasher set up here as well. So, 
overall very very solid turn one board there and again even if we didn't have swap frog in our opening hand if all we had was a sprite starter that resolved uh we could have ended on a very similar board state if not this exact board here as well gonna use my ash blossom to negate this pot of extravagance from my stun opponent as well as using elf to bring back jet i'll just do that now uh, because my opponent played Extravagance, I don't really expect Red to be particularly useful here, so I'm just going to use Jet to add a starter instead for next turn plays. And I guess my opponent just did not have the resources to be able to put up with all this because they ultimately just conceded after that search there. So, yeah, short game. Within the game itself, there wasn't a whole lot that happened, but again, I really just more wanted to use that one to show what a typical turn one uh, with this deck looks like uh, utilizing the Melfi engine there. So there is that duel. Let's go and take a look at the next one here. Okay, this time we are going to be up against Shizu Tears, and this is definitely going to be a lot more of a back and forth style game than that last one was there. We're going to start off with the first turn here, and we got a pretty good opening hand. Got a Nimble Beaver for plays, a Carrot on top of it, and Imperm C and Dash. Definitely cannot complain about a hand like this. Starting off with my Nimble Beaver, opponent's going to fire off a Max C or a try to, but thankfully I've got that Ash Blossom to stop that here. Chain Link's going to resolve. I don't think opponent's too likely to have any other disruption in their hand moving forward for the rest of the turn. So uh, here comes the Nimble Beaver. I'll throw out the Carrot now just to have it out there. And then overlay my Beavers into the Gigantic Sprite. Going to activate my Gigantic Sprite's effect. Um, and get, use that to get a blue because I don't have access to that kind of part of my sprite engine yet. So blue is of course going to get jet, and then I'll use jet to get a starter here. I probably should have just gotten the smashers, honestly. Uh, the starter for the red might not be as good if it is tier elements, which does end up being in this case, but um, you could really make an argument for either case. All right, now I'm going to use Elf to bring back the blue, and rather than go for IP, I'm just going to go for my Melfi of the Forest here, um, because I'm going to be able to have access to both Red and Carrot, as well as my uh, Melfi Caddy as well, um, and then the Maxi and the Imperm too. So in that regard, I didn't feel like I necessarily needed the IP to have even more additional disruption. I, I felt like this was going to end up being enough. Poet starts with a Foolish Burial Goods. I did consider negating this with Carrot, but uh, you can also just negate the card that it sends with Carrot, so I was like, yeah, we don't really need to deal just yet. Uh, instead, I'll change Sprite Elf. The problem, though, is that I actually can't negate the Soliac now because I brought back a Jet, which has to trigger, and the Carrot has to chain directly to the Spell or Trap card, so a little bit of an oops on my part. I actually end up um, kind of screwing myself out of stopping this search here. Minor misplay, um, but it is definitely one that matters. All right, opponent's going to use the Mudora um, and summon that, as well as sending the Kel back to mill five. So now that my opponent has summoned a monster, I want to activate Melfi Caddy. I want this Herald of Arclight on the board as soon as possible. My opponent did already mill a Havness, and they're going to try to mill an Agido here. But now I get a chance to chain with my Penny, and you know, even though my opponent is still going to get to fusion summon here, at the very least, this next mill five. All their monsters are about to get banished because Penny summons itself and then immediately after that you do the Synchro Summon. So it does happen all within the chain link there. Okay, here's Herald of the Arclight. Agido resolves. They end up banishing um, you know, a few of their cards. Definitely not bad. We ended up banishing our own Ronin, which is not ideal, but what can you do? Alright, here comes the... Uh, kit close, now my opponent's going to battle. This is actually maybe an argument as to why you might have wanted the IP. Um, although, of course, if we'd made IP, we wouldn't have had enough materials to make the Melfi of the Forest, so it's a bit of a moot point. Opponent's going to triple attack to draw to. Um, do I think that was right here? I don't know. I feel like stealing my Sprite Elf was probably better, right? Because, oh, they have a Max C, so they could have gotten something back, but. Opponent wants to get off kit close. I'm going to try to start by using red to negate it. Uh, this is going to force a Herald of Orange Light for my opponent, which is definitely good enough for me. Uh, I get to just chain the Imperm on the Kikolos following that and negate it that way. Opponent's last card at hand is Shira, and they're going to overlay the two for Time Thief Redoer, and then pass the turn to me. So Time Thief Redoer is going to allow them to proc Shiren's effect, but I do have two copies of DD Crow in my hand, so uh, I don't really have to worry too much about that. Gonna start with this, well, starter, as one naturally does. 
getting a blue, using blue's effect. Opponent's gonna chain the Time Thief Redoer right here. That's totally fine. I don't really care, because again, I have the DD Crow, so I can just go ahead and stop the Shiren that got detached. Yeah, and also having this other DD Crow and a Call By in my grave, I'm feeling really good about my position here. I'm also about to grind my opponent out of resources, which this doesn't often happen this way. Uh, it's definitely not usually Sprite that grinds all of Tier Limits resources out. It's pretty often the other way around, but here we actually managed to have enough control of the board state thanks to our uh, turn one plays there that uh, we are able to uh, just end up winning the grind game and having advantage over our opponent in terms of card advantage. Card advantage, for those who don't know, is basically totaling the number of resources you have on your hand and field and comparing so to your opponent. Although with, especially with the prominence of Ashizu Shufflers, it's often uh, graveyards you'll want to take a look at as well. So, don't have enough to OTK here, but uh, definitely do have enough to deal a lot of damage. And then, since I don't have any really further use for this Melfi of the Forest, I'll just link it away with the Jet in order to make another Sprite Elf here. I should have put my Gigantic Sprite probably in this Monster Zone, so that it would be uh, protected by targeting, but I'm not really planning on using my Gigantic Sprite much further anyway. I'm actually going to de- uh, they're not detached, I'm going to uh, sack it with the red to negate and destroy this Time Thief Redoer. Uh, just trying to keep my opponent in top deck mode and not give them access to any good cards here. They're going to start by normal- or respond, rather, by normal summoning a Kelbeck. Which I do have the Smashers to take care of, but it is still annoying because it, it's going to make me use the Smashers here. Uh, just to stop a monster that's threatening to battle over mine, rather than banishing something more important like a kick close or something like that. But I definitely will do it to save my Sprite Elf here. Especially because this is my last Sprite Elf, I don't have a third copy in this extra deck, so I uh, definitely need it. I'm going to use the CD Crow during my opponent's end phase just to use it on the Rudora. Uh, it's the last Shuffler that's in their yard. It's really the last relevant anything that's in their yard, so... Plus I have a call by if they end up milling a tier name uh, on their next turn or something. So yeah, now my opponent doesn't have any responses in Graveyard, they have nothing on hand or field. Uh, I drew a Swap Frog, but unfortunately for me, I already sent my Ronin Toad in. I think I actually could have used Swap Frog to send another copy of itself, because I didn't have... Yeah, I think the third one is still in my deck, but I just decided to play it safe and not activate the effect, because uh, if you don't actually have a third Swap Frog, in your, or the last Swap Frog in your deck, you still activate this effect, and then you send away the Swap Frog that's on field, so... Um, again, I just figured I'd play it a little bit safe and just not activate the effect. I am frustratingly going to be 400 points off lethal here. I looked and I don't, I really don't think I could have found another 400 points, but that's fine. I'll just make an IEP Mascarena and then uh, if my opponent ends up having plays, I can just make an Avermax. Tier Limit already has enough of a hard time outing uh, an Avermax with an IEP under it, so I think that's going to doubly be true for my opponent that's in top deck mode. And indeed, after seeing the top card of their deck, they just ultimately end up uh, conceding it must not have been relevant. Also, sorry about that, I just dropped my phone there, but oh well. Um, so yeah, there is that duel, a nice example of how we typically look at game against tier limits to go. Uh, just again, grinding them out with that targeted hate and disruption there. So, there is that game, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Alright, so for this one, my opponent is on Pendulum Magician, which is... Yeah, you know, that's a fucking prequel meme, right? A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Definitely. <laughs> I, uh, it's, like, it's been a while since I've played against Pendle Magician, period, but I definitely didn't expect to see it, uh, at all in this meta. So. Gonna start with a starter here. Opening hand is looking pretty good. Starter for Jet, because I already have the blue. And then grabbing the Smashers, because of course I've already used the starter, so. Now I'm going to special blue and add myself a sprite red and throw that on the board before I overlay the blue and the jet into the gigantic sprite. And because we don't have our swap frog just yet, I imagine that's what we'll be summoning, or we would if our opponent uh, did not have an infinite impermanence, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's, I mean, it's a little annoying, but uh, definitely worse things could have happened to us here. So I'm actually going to just link away the Gigantic and the Red for Elf in this case, and then I can use Elf's effect to bring back Red and sit on that, and then at some point during my opponent's turn I'll bring back Jet and get another starter that way. Of course, after setting the Imperm and the Smashers. My opponent's going to start by normal summoning the uh, Harmonizing Magician, very interesting, uh, and then chaining a Call By to my Sprite Elf's effect. 
So that's a little unfortunate because now if I want to get a monster effect, I have to get rid of my elf, which I'm more hesitant to do so. But we also have imperm and smashers, so I'm probably just going to use my imperm for the monster effect negation and then smashers uh, my opponent here. So they went to then battle with the harmonizing magician, and I almost, in response to the declaration of the attack, just used smashers right then and there because I'm like, what's my opponent up to? They have to be up to something, right? There's probably going to be some weird pendulum effect they activate that I, I have no idea even exists. Then. That is true, they do activate a weird pendulum effect that I had no idea existed. That's going to be that of Perform Pal Odd Eyes Dissolver, I think is this card's name? Yeah, Dissolver. Uh, to special summon itself from the hand when one of their pendulum monsters battles, and it's also going to keep their harmonizing from being destroyed by this battle. Now they're going to try to use the Dissolver to battle over my elf, but I'm just going to use the Smashers now and banish both it and my Sprite Red. Main Phase 2, opponent does actually have more plays here. They have a pendulum scale to set. One of them being the Wisdom Eye, I think is this card called? Yeah, the Wisdom Eye. So they get to summon that and then go for Time Star Magician. Now you might have noticed that I have this Maxi in my hand, and I haven't really been using it at all uh, this turn. Um, even when I, you know, saw my opponent throw down the Pendulum Scale, I usually I like to chain Maxi in response to that. But in this case, I actually wanted to chave ma chave, save Maxi uh, just in case for two reasons. Uh, both kind of minor, but uh, the two reasons were, one, I wanted to save it for a future turn in case it needed to be dropped in order to, like, have a chance at disrupting my opponent. Because in this situation, my opponent's already, like, used their battle phase, right? I know I'm going to get a next turn. I know I'm not going to lose. So uh, it doesn't really seem like I need to use Maxi here. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, I could potentially use it as a level 2 monster with a sprite card that I draw if my opponent does end up being able to answer this elf here. But it's going to activate the Time Storm Magician effect to try to search, but I'm going to respond with the Infinite Permanence. Go ahead and negate that. And then after that they get to use the Black Fang Magician in order to uh, have the attack of my sprite elf. Uh, and then they target the Harmonizing Magician. So now I will use Max C. I know what you're thinking, you know. Did you literally just say you were saving Max C? Uh, but why are you using it now? The reason I'm using it now is because now my opponent, although they don't threaten lethal, they do threaten to make a significant board state with this Harmonizing Magician, right? When they bring it back, uh, they could use it for... I think Electromite can be made um, using just one Pendulum Monster. I actually don't remember off the top of my head, but... Either way, I don't want them to start linking into a whole bunch of crap, or at least if they are going to do that, I want to be able to, like, build up my hand in response, because as you can see, uh, like, I do still have Sprite Elf, but that's pretty much about all I've got at this point, so... In this instance, I will go ahead and fire off the Maxi here, and it's pretty effective, it just is going to stop my opponent right there, and pass the turn back to me, so... I'm going to lead with my Sprite Elf's effect to get back blue, uh, at this rate, I know my opponent doesn't have any kind of disruption. Uh, it's pretty nice being able to get to uh, being able to play against an opponent that doesn't have uh, really any form of disruption. Because you know, I'm used to, of course, playing against tier elements where there's like literally always a shuffler in the graveyard. And it's like you always have to be thinking about you know something. But um, that is also like what it makes the tier one match up a lot of fun. It's just nice to take a break from it every now and then. <laughs> Alright, gonna overlay Swap Frog and Ronin. Go for my Oni Bumara Soul Sweeper. Get this Time Star Magician off the board. And then we have enough damage in play to just go ahead and end this duel. And the last 200 is gone now. So, there is that duel there against Pendle Magicians. We have one more game to look at. Let's go straight into it. And the last duel is going to be, once again, against Ishizu Tier Lament. Uh, opponents on DD Crows. Um, what other tech are they playing? Oh yeah, they're playing Foolish Burial as well, that's right. Alright, so I'm going to start here. Uh, this hand is actually not too bad at all. I opened a level 2 on a Sprite Jet, so I definitely can't complain too much at all. Especially when my opponent uses Ash Blossom on the Jet here. Um, because it's not going to stop me from making plays, I can still go into Gigantic, and I can triple tack and look at my opponent's hand and screw it over, because Pearl Arena is really the only major relevant card they have. Their other cards were DD Crow, Callby, and the Kalbeck. So, I do want to keep the DD Crow and Callby in mind, 
uh, when I try to make plays with my Sprite Elf, uh, those are probably not going to happen. And uh, the Kelbit can potentially come up to bounce one of my things, but it's not super likely to. Alright, so I'm linking away the Gigantic and the Blue into Elf. Now, normally, I, my plan was to just grab Caddy at this point until I saw the Crow and the Callby in my opponent's hand. So I'm actually going to target the Sprite Blue and try to see if I can force my opponent to use that DD Crow. And they do. They actually do use the DD Crow, which is good. I definitely want this Caddy in the graveyard still to be able to summon at this point, especially because I know I'm playing against Tier Elements thanks to Triple Attack looking at my opponent's hand. I would love to establish a Herald of the Arc Light here at some point. So, um, yeah, there is that. And I'll just set the Imperm before passing. So, again, I know my opponent's hand is Kelbeck, Callby, and one unknown. Uh, the unknown is going to be revealed now. It's going to be Tier Limit Shiren. I'm going to use the red to negate it, but even though I sacked Elf, I'm going to opt not to destroy it, because if I did that, I would just proc the Shiren's effect. Although, let me look at their graveyard real quick. Oh, you know what? That was actually a misplay. Oh, I'm just now realizing that, because... I know what the other two cards in their hand were, and they don't have another material to fuse with. Oh, shoot. You know what? That was actually a misplay. Huh. I just realized that now, while watching this game back. Yeah, because I'm used to negating but not destroying with red in these situations, uh, because I'm just used to, yeah, yeah, this just, it just wasn't thinking. Opponent's going to call by this jet as soon as I special one, which is a little annoying, because I actually would really like a starter or smashers here. Look at my yard. I think I'll probably just get a starter here for even more plays. But we can still make them uh, make a gigantic sprite by overlaying these two. That will let me special blue. Blue will trigger. I'll special, or I'll add carrot rather, and then special it. Moving to battle phase, just battling with these three. I don't really have the opportunity to uh, find lethal here, so I think it's just fine to battle with these. And I'd rather have the elf on board for my opponent's turn than put it under this gigantic for another 1600 points of damage in this situation. Now I can bring back my caddy, because I know my opponent doesn't have crow or call by to stop it anymore. Their hand is Keldek, Shiren, and an unknown. Um, yeah, I really should have just negated and destroyed that Shiren. That was definitely a misplay on my part. But it's got a Herald of the Arc Light to respond with this Sprite Elf, so um, it's actually not too bad here, the Shiren. They at least don't get to mill a total of eight. Because they don't... Like, the Shiren summons itself, um, even though there's no cards left in hand. But, they need to have sent a monster in order to be able to mill three. But, they do still get to mill five off of this Kelbeck here. Um, I'm going to chain the Caddy's effect, but unfortunately, due to the way that the chain links work out, I don't get to actually summon the Herald until after my opponent mills five here. Thankfully for me, the only thing they really milled uh, looks like is Agido and Mudora and a Scream. So, no Fusers yet. So I still have a chance to get in with this uh, Melfi Penny and make a Herald of the Arc Light here. And now this next set of mills will end up getting banished from my opponent. They do get to add a Soliac, which is a little not great. <laughs> not for me. Um, but we did manage to uh, get them to banish a Rhino Heart. Unfortunately, they're just going to use Soliac to add a Rhino Heart that they milled. Battle over my Herald of the Arclight. Ugh, yeah, I should have negated and destroyed this Shiren. I do still get to Imperm the Rhino Heart here, though. Ah, but then yes, they get to Redoer here. And this will allow them to proc their Shiren effect, and this time, yeah, I can't really do anything about it at all. They get to go for Kick Close, they get to get a Search, and they'll get some Mills, and it's like, yeah, it's just generally not good for me. So, I'm actually going to fast forward this, because at this point, this is like pretty typical tier limit stuff. They're milling 8 here. They hit a, they hit Rhino Heart and Havenus, so they get to bring that back, send the Soliac, and then use that to fuse for. They go for Drago Sepelia instead of Roll Close here, which I kind of, I don't know, I think I would have made Roll Close, right? Because, like, if I top deck Sprite Starter, that's really, really good for me. Although, to be fair, the Dragos Sapelli can still stop a lot of things that I can do. Yeah, we'll just end up seeing what we top deck. And then, of course, they get the Redoer back. I don't think... Yeah, there's not really... I don't think any one card I could top deck to get myself out of this. And I ultimately just decided to concede at this point. So, 
Yeah, that was a very close one, and looking back, I, I didn't even realize that after the game ended, but yeah, now having watched this replay, I totally saw my own misplay there. I absolutely should have destroyed the Shire, and I went on autopilot a little bit and thought, oh, sitting into the graveyard by card effect is bad, so don't do it, but again, in that instance, because I knew what was in their hand and they didn't have anything else in graveyard, I 100% should have done it. Had I not known what was in the rest of their hand, I think it would have been right to not destroy it, but again... I knew their hand was exactly, I think, Kelbeck plus Call by at that point, in addition to the Shiren. So, definitely an oopsie on my part, but, you know, it happens to the rest of us. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Now let's go ahead and move to our outro. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me. Uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can of course feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way, so if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there, for just 5 bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack, uh, you'll find a lot more value in that pack full of filler over there. We've got some previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on Patreon over there. We've got some Q&As, and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation, you do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot as I do um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.